Jesus did for us is in the past. Jesus has already done. That's why I said the grace that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Jesus appeared physically here to die for our sins and that it has already happened. It, we don't have to do anything for it to happen. Grace has already appeared. He has come to die for us and it happened in the past. So this scripture is talking about grace which has happened for us in the past. Grace which is working in us in the present and grace that will rapture us in the future so in the past our salvation has already been happening because jesus christ has died for our sins and all that a man needs to be saved is to believe in jesus christ and he shall be saved not by anything he has done by faith in what christ paid for him at the cross and that what brings salvation unto every man that is upon the earth so all that a man needs to be saved is to believe in Jesus Christ and it happened in the past so presently what the grace of God is doing for us is what is said in verse 12 he says that so presently the grace of God we have received teaches us and that is what the verse 12 was saying he says that I take it again the verse 12 he says teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world he's talking about this present moment the grace of god is teaching us to live soberly to live righteously and godly in this present world deny ungodliness and worldly love that is what grace the grace of god teaches us to do so the gospel of god's grace is what empowers us to live the righteous life that that we are in Christ Jesus to live the godly life that we are so that we deny ungodliness and worldly lust and that is what the grace of God is doing in our life in this present moment how does grace teaches us when we experience grace grace teaches us from within so when we read Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 it says for it is God who went in as both to work and to do of his pleasure that is for it is God that is grace who work within us both to work and to do according to his pleasure so the grace of God that saved us is also working in us it's, it's, it's working its life within us so that we can live the life that he has freely given unto us that is what the Bible says that the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. So the grace of God teaches us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 also says that For we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has prepared us in advance to walk in them. So it was not good works that created us in Christ. It was through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, what He did for us on the cross, that saved us. That is what the verse 11 was saying, that the grace of God has appeared unto all men. The grace has already happened. So we believe in the grace and we were saved. So it was the grace that we believe that saved us. In the verse 10 of Ephesians chapter 2, is saying that, we were created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God prepared in advance for us to walk in them. God prepared our good works in advance so that we will walk in them. The grace of God has already appeared for us so that we will believe in it. And once we believe in the grace of God and walking in the grace by faith, we will be doing good work because. That is what we have been created in Christ Jesus unto. We have been created to do good work. So good work is, is what our life is about. The fruit of the Spirit, we don't struggle to bear them. Why? Because it is already born in our spirit. Love is already in us. Joy is already in us. Patience is already in us. Long suffering is already in us. Self-control is already in us. All that you need to know that all this has already been deposited in your spirit. And therefore, you have to allow it to flow out of you. And therefore, when people 
are treated you bad, you are able to show them love. Why? Because the love of God is already shared abroad in our hearts. You are be able to be patient because knowing that the Lord will make all things perfect in your life in His time. So, that is the present work of grace in us. Now you can understand why it says grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live soberly, righteously and godly and be zealous of good work in this present world. That is the present work of grace in our life. Finish it. Now let's finish it with the verse 13 which says looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is so beautiful. He said, looking for the, that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And that is what we are all looking for. And that is in the future. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that He will appear to take us to be with him he will change this our earthly our lonely body to his glorious body so that is the rapture he said that looking for the blessed appearance of our lord jesus christ that is talking of what grace will do in us in the future by grace everyone who has believed in jesus christ is looking for that blessed hope of the coming of the lord jesus christ which we call the rapture so and nothing can rob us the church of that blessed hope it is like almost every letter of apostle paul he talked of the coming of our lord jesus christ and the appearing of our savior is so near that it was first mentioned we know that all the things that the scriptures have talked about that will precede before the rapture are happening before our eyes so we are so assured and confident that our Lord will be coming soon for us and we rejoice in this glorious hope. Hallelujah. So before the worst happened, before God judged the earth, Jesus will rescue us first from the world. A lot of people are saying that the time that we are in now um, is the time that the Antichrist is going to take over the whole world and Christians are going to suffer. No. Before there will be any worse situation, the Lord will come for us and we shall be with Him. Hallelujah. Just as the scripture has said, the Bible says that we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the trinket of our eyes. Our body will be transformed and go up to meet the Lord in the air hallelujah blessed be to jesus forevermore what a blessed hope it is for us to meet the lord in the air that is when you read first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 to 18. let me read this before we bring it to an end first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 to 18 says for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him, with them in the crowds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Hallelujah. Blessed be to Jesus. And I believe that we have been comforted hearing this from Apostle Paul that our Savior will come for us and we shall be with him forever. Glory be to Jesus. So we can understand now that grace appeared in the past for all men so that every man can believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. And presently what grace is doing in us is, is teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and live soberly, righteously, and a godly life in this present world. And lastly, the grace of God has assured us, has given us full assurance of faith 
of that blessed hope of the coming of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you for watching this video and I would like you to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button so that anytime I put on a video, you will be the first person to receive it. God bless you.